Hey guys, welcome back. We're looking at the Olivetti again today. If you watched last week's episode, there was a folder on the hard drive called Gemma and an executable in there called EM. It's actually this awesome game called Electroman. We're gonna have to have a look at this on CRG Plays one week. It's made by Epic Games. Those guys that create Fortnite. I don't know if it's the same Epic. I'm gonna have to look into that, but that's not really the point of today's video. Today, the postman has been... We have some capacitors which we're going to try and fix this floppy drive with. We have our ESS sound card, so we'll definitely be getting that installed. And we have our 3Com uh, network card. Now, these are all well and good, but I have no way of loading the drivers onto this machine until we fix this. So hopefully the capacitors will solve that problem. So let's get this machine tore down again, get the floppy drive out, get the solder and iron heated up, and let's get started. Okay, so here's the floppy drive, we've got the lid off. For anyone that's interested, it's an Epson SMD 1000. And as we've seen in last week's video, it's not reading discs. We did try to clean the heads, we lubricated the rails and whatnot, didn't make any difference. So the last thing I thought we would try is changing these two capacitors. Now, this one here is uh, 120 UF, 16 volt, and I was able to get a replacement, exactly the same size, so that's happy days. This one here is 10 UF and 50 volt, but I wasn't able to find a 50 volt one easily, so I have these 100 volt ones here. The voltage doesn't really matter, just as long as you don't go under it, just as long as the capacitance figure is correct, well, it should work. These ones are slightly taller though, so first thing I want to do is just make sure that when a disc is in, it isn't uh, going to foul that. And no, it shouldn't do, that's the disc in. And you can see it's well clear of the capacitor there, so if the new one we put in is slightly taller, it shouldn't really matter. So, we'll just continue turning this down. Right, that was a bit of a pig to get apart. I had to completely dismantle the drive, as you can see. There's the motor. And it uh, looks like it's direct drive. So, that's that. This is odd, isn't it? The uh, LED just, it's not soldered onto the board. It just pushes in there. And it's got this weird loop in the legs there, see? There are various wee uh, surface mount capacitors on this, so Suppose there is a probability that one of these could be bad. If this isn't spinning at the right speed, perhaps. But we don't have anything to try and test that or fix that with today, so... Instead, we're going to try and replace these two. Okay, so we'll try the bigger cap first. It's these two here. Here and here. So I'm just going to try and desolder using a wee bit of the wick rather than using the desoldering station because this is a wee bit too fine for that I would think. So let's see how this works. Let me see if I can grab the capacitor from below, see if we can get it out. Here we are. That's okay. I see the two holes. Our old capacitor. It doesn't look like it's leaked or anything, but well, it's a fur age, so it doesn't do any harm to replace them anyway. And our new one was in this way here. This uh, side here is a negative. And this solid line on the side of the capacitor denotes a negative or a shorter leg. Also, actually, just to show you, 
show you. If you look on the board, this, that's where the capacitor is removed from there. And the solid side in the circle here, the notes negative as well. Or if you're completely stuck and you can't figure it out, you could check for continuity between whatever side and see the other cap. That's negative. You should have continuity between there and there. Let's try and get this one in. That's quite a tight fit sitting there by itself. So let's grab this in the vise quickly and try and solder it on. Let's take our snips. And cut the wee legs off. Okay. So that's one done. That's that one done. Right, let's do the same with this one. Then we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so that's them both on. Two new caps. Hold it on here and on here. We're just. Uh, Tidy it up and finish off. We'll get a cotton bud and our old favourite IPA. And we'll just go over where we put the new solder on because there's a bit of flux there. Okay. That's not too bad. Pretty clean. That's just a wee bit of stickiness off that uh, protective cover that was on. That has to go back on anyway. Right. Let's try and get it reassembled. And fingers crossed. Okay, so we'll have the disk drive back in. Uh, it's just sitting there really at the minute. Eager to test it. So we have the computer on. Let's grab a disk. Right, let's see if we can access it. Disk is not formatted, do you want to format it now? Yes. Please work. Okay, so the floppy drive was a bit of a failure, a bit annoyed about that. Let's cheer ourselves up and install a sound card. And with that, with its IDE header, let's install a CD drive in here. Right, so we are going to install it in the top ISA slot here. But first, I need to attach the IDE cable to it. So it's labelled up in this corner here, then one, two. And that's denoted on the IDE cable by the red line, or by this arrow here on the connector. There we are. Right, this is going to be fun because this wee case is very tight. We'll put this in first. Oh, that's tight. Right. 
Now, which way am I going to run this cable? I need to get the cable to the other side of this. So, you have to let me have a think about that for a minute. Right, what an absolute pain in the backside that was. I had to take the power supply out, take the motherboard out. Um, we have rerouted the floppy cable up this way here and to get this uh, connector out of the way. I'll have to try and source a smaller floppy cable though, this is a bit long. This other one here I have is just too short, unfortunately. I have the sound card in. The top slot with the IDE cable going up and over through where the sound card, or sorry, where the floppy cable goes. Right, let's put the CD drive in. This is a Mitsumi CD drive from 1998. Still works fine though. Oh, do you know what I'm forgetting? It's just as well I remembered. This for CD audio. Thank goodness I remembered that now. Hopefully this will be a bit easier to install. Cable management isn't exactly a thing in these cases. Right, let's try and get the CD drive in. So we'll plug in our CD audio cable. Like so. that on and then the IDE cable which unfortunately is nowhere near long enough to get anywhere near the front of the case <clears throat> so I'll just have to do this in here somehow all right this is drive in just about got everything connected all right let's get a couple of screws in it Okay, let's try and get the case back together, power it up, and uh, see about getting some drivers installed. It doesn't look too bad with the CD drive installed, eh? Right, let's power it up. Still seems to be working, which is always a good sign. Right, let's try and install some drivers for the sound card. And one thing I actually forgot to plug in was the sound. It's better, speaker's plugged in. Right, welcome to the audio drive setup. Okay, so address 220, interrupt 5, DMA channel 1, MPU 401, won't be using that, I'd love to get one of those, but mm, they're kind of expensive, wave table, not too sure what that is, just leave it alone, joystick, yes, we'll leave that enabled, and the CD-ROM, I'm not really sure what to set this to, if I'm honest, so we'll just leave it as standard, unless we get some conflicts or something, then we can come back and try and change it. Reboot. We're gonna get sound. We have sound. Brilliant. Now, how do I go about getting the CD drive? Ah. We have sound, but we have no mouse. Why have we no mouse? 
Okay, so presumably there's some sort of confliction there between the drivers I installed and the mouse on this thing. All right, let's remove the drivers just to see if that if the mouse works again. Shame, because we had the sound. The mouse is still not working. Uh, what is going on? I'm gonna do a hard, hard reset. Yep, mice works again after a hard reset. Right, we'll try reinstalling the drivers and uh, try, I don't know, different interrupt maybe. Right, so I think we're getting somewhere. Um, interrupt 12, that was assigned to the CD drive is the PS2 mouse. I was thinking the mouse is interrupt 4, but that's a serial mouse, not a PS2 mouse. So hopefully if we change that from 12 to say 10, this will work. Well, we have sound again. Do we have a mouse? Yay! It's all working, happy days. Right, what are we gonna do? I wonder how we get it to uh, add a D drive or whatever in here for the CD. We just stick a CD in, for example. Yeah, I mean, the drive spins up, but nothing happens. Right, need to look into that. But, to finish off the video today, anyway. Let's play a game with a bit of sound. And what better to play than a bit of Wolfenstein 3D. Sounds good. Music sounds like something out of Half Life too. Is it just me? No. <laughs> uh, I think I'm getting about two frames per second, maybe one. That's really not playable. All right, let's try it under DOS. Should get more performance. Yeah, that's much better. Yeah, playing better now.
Nothing better than killing Nazis on your 386. Right, let's try a bit of lemmings as well. Turn that down a bit and realize how loud it was. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased. It works. Right, I think I'll do for today's video because this is starting to drag on a wee bit. I need to have a wee look at how to uh, mount the CD drive properly. It's working in the hardware, but I need to get it to show up in Windows and on DOS. So, I'll have to do that. Oh, by the way, I figured out how this works. Let me show you. You turn the machine on. I do think this is meant to come across automatically, but when that is across... You see it can only get so far through its diagnostics, then it asks you to turn key to unlocked position to continue. And that's this. So push that across, and then it continues booting. Right, so for the next video then, hopefully I'll have the CD drive sorted out and uh, we'll have a go at the network card. Until then, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Check out all my other videos. And uh, I'll see you again soon.